This is Numesin Cloud Pager, the first and only cloud native container management platform for Windows desktops. In this video, I will demo just some of Cloud Pager's awesome features. To begin, I already have some applications already published in my tenant, some AppV packages, and some Cloud Paging application containers too. But let's start the demo by uploading some new applications. I have three packages here one AppV package one MSAX container and one cloud paging application container. And to upload the applications, it couldn't be easier. I just drag and drop them into the applications menu and voila, that's it. This initiates the upload, but I don't have to waste time waiting for this to complete. While the uploads are occurring, I can make the most of my time and edit the application information. I simply click on one of the applications, click edit, and I can set a good name for the application, version, publisher, and set a nice looking icon so others using the Cloud Pager admin portal would be able to see that when they are in the applications menu. I can also set a description which could help other admins and it can also be useful if using the Cloud Pager storefront feature to provide self-service access to applications for users via a web portal. I'll just quickly update the application information for the other applications. But just know being able to edit these applications while they are uploading is a real time saver when you compare it to traditional deployment tools, which require handling application uploads and editing one application at a time. Finally, you can see here that PuTTY is in an optimizing phase. This is because PuTTY is my AppV package. This option modernizes my AppV package and helps me eliminate the need for AppV connection groups, the use of run virtual for my office add-ins, for example, and enables me to use some unique Cloud Pager features that I will show you in this demo. Now we've uploaded some applications, let's go ahead and deploy some applications. I could make them available to users via a web portal storefront for self-service access as I discussed, but in this demo, I will deploy my applications via WorkPods, which publish the applications directly to the user's desktops as you'll see in just a moment. Before I publish a WorkPod, I will show my active Azure Virtual Desktop session here with the Cloud Paging Player open. As you can see, there are currently no applications available to me. This player can run headerless so your users never have to see it, but I will keep it open during my demo to illustrate what is happening as we go. Now I'll create my work pod. I'll give it a name, I'll set a description, and I'll add some applications, including the three applications we just uploaded, and then I'm going to assign them to a user group. This user group is an Azure Active Directory group or Entra ID group to use the latest branding. Once I am happy with my work pod, I can publish it, but I get prompted for a comment. This is a very useful feature of Cloud Pager as it tracks administrative actions taken in the portal for auto logging purposes, and it enables some great functionality that I'll show you later in this video. With the work pod published, I will launch back into my Azure Virtual Desktop session, and we see applications are already starting to get published for me. So let's start launching some of these applications. By default, as I launch the applications, they get virtualized on demand for me, but we can see this is pretty quick for these particular applications. This is 7-Zip, and we can see if I go to the About, this is version 2201, which is what I upload and is what I expect. I launched the application from the player, but I did not have to. As you see, the shortcuts also appear on the desktop or star menu, as a user may expect. I can also launch PuTTY, which also launches as expected. And finally, I can go ahead and launch Mozilla Firefox, which as you may remember, is the MSAX container. Firefox launches, and I can browse maybe to numesson.com, and you can see that it is a functioning browser. And if I go to the about, we'll see that it is the version that I deployed and the one we expect. This MSAX container was one that I downloaded directly from Mozilla. I did not package this myself. I just downloaded it and deployed it. So we did see the PuTTY launched fine. This was our optimized AppV package. And if I go to PowerShell, you will see I cannot find the AppV package for PuTTY. If I go back to CloudPager and look at the application, this is the case because it is our app v package that has been optimized using our cloud paging container technology. If at any point for any reason 
I want to just deploy the unoptimized original AppV package, I can do this by just editing the application and untoggling that option. Now if I go back to my desktop session, we can see that PuTTY is no longer visible in the player. And if I go to the star menu, we see that it's now there. And if I now search with PowerShell again, we could see that I now find an AppV package for PuTTY. So it's using that native AppV package. And of course, if I launch the PuTTY application, it launches and works. Next, I would like to show you how powerful CloudPager is for orchestrating application updates. I have this application called Inkscape. If I launch it and go to the About page, you can see this version is 0.92. Let's say I would like to update this application to a major new version, 1.1. 1.1 is a 64-bit version of the application, so even though it may look similar, it's a pretty significant difference. So let's go ahead and update this application. And that's as simple as just editing our existing work pod. I'll add version 1.1 of the application and uncheck version 0.92. Now if I publish and again leave a descriptive comment, maybe put in a change control number to keep it in lockstep with what is in my ITSM product and adhering to my change control process, now if I go back to my active desktop session with that published, we will see version 0.92 is removed and version 1.1 is now available. If I launch it, we see the UI looks a little bit different on launch. In the new document, it looks kind of similar as the old version. And if I go to about, we see the version is now 1.1 with a nice fancy modern looking splash screen. But let's say theoretically this application went through our user acceptance testing and everything passed testing with flying colors. But after deploying the update, users start flooding the service desk with calls, saying the application does not work with a certain critical file type that they work with every day. These users can no longer work, and this is a major productivity loss and a SEV1 incident. With older tooling, this may require you to have pushed an uninstall of that new version and then push an install of the old version and just hope that it worked. Maybe if the vendor didn't package their installer properly, it may have left files behind after removing that newer version and not allow the old version to work again, which could be catastrophic and cause hours or days of downtime. This is not a problem when using our containers. They run in their own container space, so those types of conflicts and corruptions are not a concern. And because we use CloudPager to orchestrate the applications, we can use the rollback feature by just going to the work pod, clicking edit, going into view revisions, and then we can see where our comments come into play too, as I mentioned earlier. I could see my revision where I published the initial apps and one where I did the application update. Visually, when looking at the two, I could see that Inkscape is different in each. I could select to roll back to the previous iteration and then when I go back to the desktop session, we see version 1.1 is removed and version 0.92 is back. This feature could save hours or days when dealing with a problematic application update. And just to show, if I go to the about, we're back to the version as expected. There are several other features I could show, but in the interest of time, let me just give a quick overview of our policies feature to wrap things up. These policies can help automate application lifecycle management and enforce application license policies. For example, maybe you have an application that entitles users to use it on a maximum of two devices. With our policies, you could set this requirement. If a user runs the application on two machines and then tries to run on a third machine, they will be unable to. You can also manage the number of users launching the application concurrently. You can remove applications on a certain date. You can remove applications after a certain period of inactivity and even selectively allow offline application access where a user can use certain applications without line of sight to CloudPager. But then you can have your other applications always require online use, providing an extra security layer and protection for your organization. Well, that's it for this demo. Like I said, we have many other features like our storefronts, our reporting, which can also assist with lifecycle management, and of course, our automated prefetch feature, which can optimize application launch times. If you would like to learn more about that, 
Check out our recent video and article and go over to newmesson.com to find out more. And if you'd like to contact us to learn more, we'd be happy to speak with you. Thanks for viewing this video.